Here's another one of those things I found the Stairmaster is teaching on the internet and thought that I would kind of bring it to your attention. And that's using larger hangers for your stair stringer connection to an upper landing floor or even a ledger like we have here. Now this is the way that I connected stair stringers for years. I toe nailed or angle nailed 16 D nails into the side of the stair stringer. And I would usually put between three or four on each side. And I'm guessing I used this to connect more than 5,000 stair stringers to a ledger, a floor, or a landing. And believe it or not, I've never had to make a repair on a stair stringer that was connected like this. But feel free to let us know if you have or email me some pictures of those connections that failed. Next up, let's take a look at the most currently available construction detail for attaching stair stringers to a ledger floor or landing with a hanger. And I don't really know how much better one connection is going to be over the other, except for the fact that maybe the manufacturers of these products get to sell more of them. But that's not the reason why I made the video. This is, and even though I don't see it very often, I do see it every once in a while. And that's the fact that some of you are using larger hangers. And I get it, the toenail connection doesn't seem to be as good as using a floor joist hanger. And if the floor joist hanger is better than toenailing, then what would be the next best thing? To use a larger hanger. And I'm not about to suggest you're ever going to have a problem with cutting two or three inches out of the bottom of a stair stringer. Unless it looks something like this. And this is kind of what I'm talking about and came across a few times on the internet. And really what we have here is an extremely weak connection. And to solve this problem, all we need to do is have a longer ledger and then maybe use the nailing method or the smaller hanger. And I'm not about to suggest a larger hanger might not be the best option on longer stair stringers that might be heavier, something 4x12 or larger. However, for a notched or unnotched stringer, that's going to be less than 10 feet long. You're probably not going to need a heavy duty hanger or even a hanger period to connect the upper stringers to a ledger, floor, platform, or landing. And next up, let's take a look at a different house where you will have another situation that could save you a lot of frustration as a do-it-yourselfer or even a professional home builder. And the situation I see all the time, whether I'm working on a project or driving by one, is that they will build the floor first and then install the stairway. And I'm here to tell you that you need to build the stairs first to locate the stair head out and then build the floor if possible. If not, then it wouldn't be a bad idea to pre-cut your stair stringers to verify the measurements for your head out before you build the floor. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the stairway should look like. And you might be working on a project that has a set of plans. And the plans usually show the upper floor line and the location of the stair steps. However, most stair builders, including myself, rarely build them to those exact specifications. And a good example of that would be if we come down here you'll notice that the front step right here does not line up with the edge of the stairs. However, this side here will line up. We'll take a look at that here after we look at the head out and the floor sheathing to provide you with an idea of where the last step will be located on the upper floor. And if you have a situation like this, you can build the landing and the steps below first and then draw a line on the landing where you want the front of the stringer to line up with. And you could even install a block here if you need to prevent the stringer from sliding down while you're holding it up on the other side. And to find this position here, you're going to need to subtract for the width of the stair riser and the nosing if it's going to have one. And in this situation here, we're going to have a three quarter inch thick riser with a one inch overhang, suggesting that this needs to be moved back at least one and three quarter inches. And then after we have that, we can just simply cut one stair stringer 
And if you have a situation like this, you can pre-cut the stair stringer and then use it to locate the stair head out or support beam. However, if that won't work for you, you can always have the stringer run a little longer and then line it up with the measurement you've selected that will work best for the upper floor framing. Because sometimes if you have a situation like this, and it doesn't line up, you can recut the stair stringer, lay it out with smaller or larger steps, as long as they meet your local building codes. Again, providing us with a good reason why we only want to lay out one stair stringer. And like I already said, I can't tell you how many jobs I come to where the stair stringer is off an inch or more because somebody built the floor first or didn't know how to locate the stair head out. So if you're not really good with math, your stair stringer measurements might be off a little bit, or you're just looking for the easiest way to locate the support beam or stair head out in the floor framing, then this just might be your best option. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, let us know by hitting the thumbs up button or letting us know in the comment area.